What's up there SEO pros, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be covering how to do an SEO audit and do it in three different phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you how I bring clients in with an initial SEO site-wide audit uh, and then go into working on the uh, more individual URLs in phase two and then going over keyword research and content clustering for a website in order to get it to rank. Let me just explain to you really quick how the SEO audits work and then uh, we'll just dive into the implementations and get you guys on your way so you can do your first SEO audit. If you want to download the template that I have for free, go to the description of this video and there will be a link that you can go ahead and enter your email and then download the template that I've spent a lot of time on making. So if that sounds good to you guys, let's just get started. So. First of all, when you're gonna be doing an SEO audit, uh, you're gonna to wanna to figure out your pricing. And the way I figured it out is kind of having three different uh, stages of your pricing. Now I'll just show you guys what I've created for my pricing uh, and you guys can pretty much just do whatever you want with yours, but uh, at least you'll have some sort of guideline on what you can do. So here we go, so phase one, um, where we're going to be working on like the site-wide SEO issues, as I was saying before, it's generally 500 to a thousand dollars to, uh, just get that going. Now, when we're doing these audits, the site-wide, these are really for websites that haven't really had any SEO done to them. And they're usually not like giant websites, um, giant websites. Generally you need to have more like in depth, like you need to look more in depth in the website. It's where if it's like a smaller website, like let's say a local business or something, you could easily start with a phase one audit and not have to go and do like phase two and three at the same time because again, it's less competitive and your, your, your barrier to entry is lower. You're going to have to have a lower barrier to entry than you would for a more comprehensive audit. So this really does come down to what you want to charge. Um, again, I don't recommend charging people a bunch of money if you haven't really been able to do that in the past. So if you look at the ladder value ladder, uh, if you've never sold an SEO audit, the thing that I recommend is start giving them away for free down here. And until you get enough people accepting your free audits, because by the way, once they buy your free audits, then you're just going to upsell your services. And I'll talk to you about how much I charge for my services so you can replicate that. But yeah, so I would recommend starting out with a free, giving away free audits. I actually recommended this to a couple of people in my uh, certification program and they started getting uh, a lot of uh, clients because uh, you don't really want to go for national to start out with if you're starting out with SEO because that's a lot harder. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to call people up. You're going to walk into their shop. Like, let's say you just go and book a chiropractor uh, visit somewhere and you tell them, hey, look, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't able to find you on Google. Uh, I was just wondering if you wanted like me to give you like a free audit. And since they know that you're in person and that you're actually in that area, you're going to be more likely to be able to sell them an audit. So, yeah, you're going to give them the free audit that I'm going to be showing you. This is the one that you're going to download in the description. It, and it's on my website if you can't find it in the description or for whatever reason. Uh, you just go to chaserunner.com and then here's the SEO template. You're gonna fill out your information, download a free checklist, and you're just gonna download it after this. And then once you download it, it's gonna look somewhat like this, where you're gonna just have all of the different um, things laid out for you, like uh, you know, the things that you're gonna want to check uh, from a site-wide perspective. And the reason why I keep saying site-wide is because when you're working on a website, like when you're starting out on a website, you don't wanna be starting out by focusing on individual URLs or doing keyword research, anything like that. And the reason for this is because most of your things that you're gonna find within a website, like right off the bat, that's gonna be affecting everything within the website is the site-wide issues. So just to give you guys a perspective, if you were gonna be working on a house, let's say this is the bottom of the house, this is like the floor. If you're gonna be working on a house, you don't want to start working on it like all the way up here at the top. This looks like a hat, but you don't want to start like adding floors like keyword research, right? Or you don't want to start like fixing individual issues with the windows and stuff over here. Uh, you want to work on the foundation first, because if anything um, you fix here, 
is going to be affecting the rest of this, you don't want like a unsolid foundation. So that's why I usually start by recommending this, which is the thing you're going to download. And, uh, and this is really going to help take your game to the next level because you're not going to have to really guess for your audits anymore. You're, you can really just go in here. It tells you what you need to do. Thank you pages, no index, no follow. PDFs, no index, no follow. Um, you know, do you have Google Search Console set up, Google Analytics? And you basically just check these off with X's and Z's. So you would say X, good, Z, bad. Uh, and then it has conditional formatting in here built in so you can kind of know uh, if it's good or bad, show it to the client with uh, greens and reds. The other thing too is with the phase one, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, you're gonna actually be able to uh, run a screaming frog scan and then input all your data and it will also show you the greens and reds seeing if um, you know the heading tags are too short or too long, so on and so on. I won't like bog you down with a bunch of information right now, but just know that this part of the template is very helpful in terms of getting people off the ground. So again, um, as I was saying before, the way I do it is I started out charging $200 uh, for audits. Actually, I was giving them away for free, and then I started charging $200, and then I started charging more. So now I charge about 500 to 1,000. Uh, it really depends on the site size. Obviously, if you're gonna be working with, let's say, a website with 2,000 pages indexed on Google, and the way you can find that out is really just by going to the website you wanna audit. So like, let's say chaserunner.com. We're gonna scroll all the way over here to the left and then just type in site colon uh, and the name of the website. And here we can see that we have 197 pages indexed. So I would probably charge only $500 for a website with such small pages indexed. However, if it was a website that was like, let's say one of my clients, private label extensions, which these guys actually just got an extra 70,000 clicks in the last three months, which is really cool. You can see 1,750. So I'd probably charge more like a thousand for a phase one audit for these guys. Now, again, depending on the size of the client and what their budget is, I might want to go and do more extensive, uh, more extensive audit for them because the phase one audit only again covers just the things that you're going to see from a site wide perspective, like Google search console, Google analytics, schema markup, plugins, Google, my business citations, page speed optimization, some web design stuff site architecture and then website basics. I don't know why that got removed here. So not that, not too many things, right? Um, these are really meant to just kind of get your foot in the door so you can get clients wondering about your services and wanting to buy and get it, get into your uh, different phases, right? So again, so we start out with the site-wide analysis and also the implementations. The way I usually charge this is I will, if somebody let's say has a local website I will start off by saying, hey, like, let me get you an audit. It's gonna cost you 500 bucks. And after we're done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna do the implementations for your website. Um, generally, it takes about 10 to 15 hours. Uh, and it really depends, right? Because if they have, let's say, only one thing wrong, like let's say they uh, just need to fix their indexation, you know, really all that is is it's just fixing up Yoast so that these things are no indexed. And so if that's all it is, and that only, let's say, takes us an hour, then, you know, I'm not gonna charge them $1,500 for that. But I will say that if they, you know, do only have that based off the audit, then I will say, Hey, let's, let's still put in, you know, um, we charge, I charge $2,500 a month, but you could say, let's put in a thousand dollars, whatever you feel comfortable with charging. And let's, let's start with, uh, fixing the things that we saw in the audit, like the indexation, let's put some conversion tracking on there or whatever your, whatever the issue is from the site wide perspective. And then let's go move into optimizing the individual URLs. We'll just take the time that comes from phase one and put it into here. And again, for your time, I generally recommend for implementations, if you're going to be doing it yourself, 10 hours is probably good. If you know a good enough amount about SEO, if you're going to be having somebody else do it, then I would probably recommend doing like, I would say probably at least 20 hours. Again, when you're giving your work to somebody else, just know that they're probably not going to be able to do your work, maybe 50% as well as you. So you want to be careful with when you give somebody else your work, especially if they really don't know the stuff that we're talking about here. What we're going to do after we do the individual stuff, and I'm going to create individual tutorials for these. I had some in the past, but they're kind of outdated. Once you go past these, what you're going to do is you're going to want to look at the individual URLs. And really all that is, is it's going into Screaming Frog. And what you're doing is you're going to be looking at how these are working out on Google from a couple different perspectives, mainly based off averages. 
So before I get into telling you guys how to go and optimize individual URLs, let me talk to you about how URLs rank, first of all. I know a lot of you guys who do SEO probably already know this, but for the most part, Google ranks uh, similar things, right? So if you wanted to rank for, let's say, cats or something very competitive, something national, uh, targeting with very high competition keywords, then you're going to have to have a lot more authority and a lot more relevance and a lot more whatever it is than the person who's ranking number one, right? You don't have to necessarily be the best, but you have to be better than the person who already is the best, quote unquote, the best, right? Because they're number one. So if that's the case, then what you want to do is you want to do something called layout optimization. And by layout optimization, I mean you want to rank for something, um, you want to rank for like, like being an entity around a certain subject. So like, let's say, let's say you want to go for computer repair, right? You want to rank locally for computer repair. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out who's ranking locally for computer repair, because again, you're not going to try to go for the best. You don't want to, you don't have to necessarily make a monster site to rank for computer repair. You just have to be better than the person in your area. What are you going to do? You're going to type in computer repair in your area. I'm in Santa Barbara, so I'll type in computer repair, Santa Barbara. Okay. So you type in computer repair and now we can see all the different people ranking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first organic result that's showing up. And here I can see that they have a certain layout, right? So they have a certain amount of text. They have a sidebar with their phone number and some extra content. They have a footer with their phone number. So again, you don't necessarily have to copy these people but you have to meet the requirements to rank. So if these guys are, let's say, they're doing something really well, like their their whole layout, you know, they, they're making sure to mention their location, their Google reviews, so on and so on, they're ranking for a reason. And so what you wanna do is you wanna at least hit that minimum barrier. You know, for instance, if I wanted to rank for computer repair, what I would do is I would try to go and I would try to find what is that layout that I need to somewhat hit. I need to have reviews, I need to have my location. I need to have a certain amount of text, some images, maybe a sidebar. And then I need to go look at the other things that these people are ranking for. Okay, they're ranking, they have all these different services. Okay, networking, Mac repair, right? So I need to go build out those other related pages. Oh, it looks like those pages are internally linking as well to the home page, to contact pages, right? So again, what I'm doing is I'm doing something called layout optimization. And phase two isn't necessarily layout optimization because you're not going to be going and just replicating a whole structure right off the bat. What you're going to be doing though, is you're going to be seeing what is working when you are wanting to optimize individual URLs. Now, why do we want to optimize individual URLs first before kind of trying to go and replicate somebody else's theme? Um, the reason for this is because generally when you have clients, the clients are going to want to see results early on, right? They want to see good, you know, these type of arrows going up. Generally when you're doing SEO, if you're not working on the pages that are bringing in the most traffic first, then it's going to, you're going to see a slower growth than as if you were to work on things that had immediate issues that would give you a faster growth. That's why what we do is in order to show people really good growth by either month one or month two, which by the way, again, if we're already going to be fixing all of these issues within the first month and we can move directly into phase two, great. That just gives us the ability to show results faster. But again, the way we do this is we generally lay out to people and say, hey, look, you know, we want to keep you for at least three phases. And generally these three phases take at least three months because that's what we want to do to at least show them results. And three months still, you know, it's not always the easiest thing to show results. But with these methods, you generally can show something within those three months. And, uh, you know, this is something that we have been able to do uh, for a few of our clients already. So, some pretty big sites. I could show you the one of our clients built with science. Uh, just in the first couple months, they went up 30,000 clicks. Um, one of our other clients, pretty big site, they're up uh, 70,000 clicks already. And that's just within three months. You can show results in three months. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but it, it is something that, you know, it can be achieved. And again, people who hire you, they want to see, they don't care as much about results as they care about just the mindset you have around results. And what I mean by that is, if you can show them that what you're doing makes sense, that you're showing um, actual deliverables, which I'm going to be showing you in a second, like you know, the like getting all this stuff dialed in, going and optimizing individual URLs, showing them what you're doing, um, they'll be pretty happy and they'll want to stay on um, because they know that you do care. And uh, the reason why they will know that you care is because 
you really want to show clients that you're not even you're not even just an SEO, but you're more of a coach. What I mean by that is, you know, if somebody's going to the gym and they want to, you know, hire you to get fit, uh, you know, they all those people generally also know that they need to, you know, they need to eat right, they need to sleep right, they need to, you know, not be sitting down all day. It's sort of the same thing with SEO. These guys that hire you for SEO. Most of them know that they also need web design, they need content, they need all that kind of stuff. And so what I generally recommend is, you know, you get you get on the phone with these guys or you email them at least four times a month because a lot of them will want to know that you're wanting you're taking care of them by really just communicating with them. <clears throat> One of the biggest things about sales and keeping people um, is really just communicating to them. It doesn't sound like anything crazy, but really just get on the phone with them and start asking them questions. You know, even if you're just saying, hey, how's your business going this month? You know, what's uh, What's one of your biggest struggles? Um, and again, you know, the conversation will open up. They'll start saying things that, you know, really will just qualify them to keep them on board. Like, oh yeah, I just figured out we need to do this, you know, and then really you could just be like, oh yeah, you're right. You know, we do need to add more content or we do need to work on the web pages. Let's check in again in a week and let's make sure that you got that done. You know, it's really just about keeping the communication open. That's how you get uh, really, really long-term results. When we move into the individual URLs, we do something kind of unique. We do something called uh, benchmarking. And I actually had a software created for this so that we can um, really get a more comprehensive look uh, for, for the averages. And remember how I was saying it's like layout? Well, all layouts come with an average in a sense. So for instance, if you're gonna have, let's say a layout like this guy, this has a certain amount of words, has a certain amount of heading tags, certain type heading tags, certain type of words, certain, um, you know, certain types of lists, that kind of thing. And so one of the things that I did is I created a software so that I could I could measure all these different averages quickly. And I, again, it's not always like the best thing to do to just look at numbers, but it does give you sort of a more comprehensive look about what's going on. What I look at really is I look at and I see, okay, what is the different surpluses or averages we need to hit? And Again, the way I do that is I have a software, it's called Benchmarketer. You guys can get it on my website, it's only 49 bucks a month. And uh, I'll leave that in the description as well. And it will let you just basically put in a URL and then plug, plug in a, a keyword and it'll, it'll show you what's, what the, the content averages are um, for your result. And this is kind of what a scan looks like. I'll just show you. Okay, so here it is. So here's for one of the keywords, Puffy Matches Reviews. You can see it shows our word count versus the average the image count versus the average. And again, you don't always have to take this like 100% uh, seriously because some of these, like for instance, there'll be so many images because um, there will be blogs and, and um, a lot of people with comments will have profile pictures and that's why it'll up the image count. So you, again, you don't always have to take this 100% to heart, but it is a good idea to look at some of this stuff to just get an idea, like the internal links count, external link count. and it, and the thing is, is that you can go, um, you could probably figure out a lot of this stuff yourself if you're already in this niche, but it's easier when you have um, your implementers just already sort of know what a lot of the deficits and surpluses are, especially with word counts. Word count's really a big one because you really do usually want to hit an average when it comes to the word count. And then sometimes with like the list items and stuff like that, as well as, as the certain types of words mentioned. From an implementation perspective, that's really where this software shines the most. The cool thing about the phase two, the thing that we're really looking at the most here is we're just looking at overall averages. And what we do within phase two is we look at the top like 10 to 20 URLs and we try to optimize those first and see if there's any major issues going on. Sometimes if you look at the top 10 to 20 URLs, a lot of them will be ranking fine. Um, they'll have really good click-through rates for the main keyword that we want to go for. They'll have really low duplicate content percentages, all that kind of stuff. And really, we could just move into phase three at that point where we actually go and start trying to rank for or start create, creating similar layouts. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. The way we get all these metrics, really, it's kind, of, it's kind of crazy. What we do is the first thing we do is we figure out the keyword we want to rank a URL for. So if we want to rank a URL for, let's say, Puppy Matches Review, the way we figure out that we want to rank for that keyword as we take really just the highest traffic page, the way we filter it is we plug the website into Screaming Frog. It spits out all of the information around uh, the data, like the, the search console data and the analytics data for the website. And then we, we filter from Z to A and we look at all the clicks for the website. So you can see these are all the highest clicks on the website. All of these pages have the highest clicks. So we bring them over and there, there they are. What we do is since these are all filtered by highest clicks, Sorry, I need some ch uh, chapstick. 
since these are all uh, filtered by highest clicks, what I do is then we go figure out, okay, what is the right keyword to rank for this page? Because when you first do this, you're only gonna know what the clicks are for the page, but you're not gonna know what the keyword is that you wanna rank. So the way you figure out the keyword is you really just go to the page, you copy it. Um, you're gonna bring it into your search console. So we plug in the page. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go and see um, for that page, what's the highest keywords that it's ranking for. So if we go to queries, you can see, okay, uh, we click on average click through rate, average position. We could see the highest clicks it's getting is for puffy mattress reviews, average position 6.7, highest impressions 23,000. The way I do this is I really just figure out what is the most relevant keywords based on what the page is going for. So if I, if I copy this puffy mattress reviews and I go to the page, you can see here the, the page is actually puffy versus purple. Um, so obviously puffy mattress review 2019 isn't really something we want to go for. And it's kind of why we're seeing a drop here because I did an experimentation to see if I could change the intent, which I wasn't able to do because obviously the page wasn't going for that. So the next best thing I'd want to go for is puffy versus purple, not puffy, ma not puffy mattress or puffy mattress review, just because it's getting more clicks and more impressions doesn't necessarily mean it's the right intent, right? So we want to, hit down as much as we can around the right thing and then we can build out related content for the other thing that we want to go for. So what I would do is I would then go try to map this and say, okay, well, this is actually the right keyword we want to go for, puppy versus purple. And then we'd pull all the metrics for that. So the way we pull that, so just go back to search console, grab all this data, and then just plug it right into our benchmarking. And then we know, okay, so the puffy match for the puffy mattress review, we got 2000 impressions, 5% click through rate, average position six, um, difficulty 10 and the way I pull the difficulty metrics is just from hrefs. I plug in the URL or sorry the keyword So puppy matches review or whatever we're going for puppy versus purple And then this will actually tell me what the keyword search uh, difficulty is which you can see it says zero here um, Which is easier of course than going for something with keyword difficulty 10 uh, I also pulled a UR rating of the page the way I get that is you can actually get that within screaming frog uh, when you sync up your hrefs. I probably will do a separate Screaming Frog tutorial uh, in the future. So if you want to see a tutorial on that, let me leave a comment and I can reply and make another tutorial for that. So either way, uh, yeah, so you can see the UR is 13, which is really just the value of the page based on the links, whether they're internal or external links coming to the page. And then the difficulty, you usually want these to sort of match up as much as possible. And then of course, the other thing that we look at is the response times of the page. We get those from GT metrics. So if the page is really high, uh, load time of usually above 2.5 seconds, we wanna to try to bring that down. And then the duplicate content, content percentage really is just looking at how many other pages match this page in terms of the, the content. And the way we do that is we plug it in a site liner like so, press go, and then we can actually plug in the URL and we can see that there is, uh, or there was, I guess they might've changed it, uh, duplicate content. Uh, here we can see it's actually 4% now, which is great because it was 25%. They actually went and fixed it. Um, and you can see this is where there was duplicate content. You can actually see uh, based on the reds and whatever color, um, what parts of these pages have matched duplicate content, which they no longer have, which is really, really good. Um, this is something we told the clients that we needed to get done and they got that done. That's phase two. And again, if you wanted to sell both of these at once, phase one and phase two, really what you would be doing is you'd be doing the phase one audit. And then of course you'd wanna be doing the implementations based off that. And then the phase two as well, which is showing you all these different things like the duplicate content, the clicks, the impressions. And really you just wanna meet certain averages. You wanna make sure that you're not going crazy over or under certain averages, like the click-through rates being way too high uh, or sorry, way too low, or if we scroll all the way over and we see that the bounce rates are really, really high for some reason, like, you know, bounce rate that's at like over 70%, which you can see here is kind of high. Um, because then again, what you wanna do is you wanna go and do uh, layout optimization. You wanna go and uh, try to go for things that people are already ranking for in that area. So for example, if we wanted to go for puffy mattress or, or puffy versus purple, we'd wanna figure out who's already ranking for that. So puffy versus purple. And here we can see it's these guys and they have a certain layout, right? They have the two images, they have a box up here, they have comparisons with these coupons and all this stuff, they have gifts, and you really wanna to try to replicate the theme. And again, you don't wanna copy people, that's not what we're talking about here, but you want to try to replicate and then improve. Um, anytime you see people rank really well on Google, it's generally because they take something 
they meet an average, right? They caught, they basically copy at first, right? They, they try to meet whatever that average is and then they improve it. This is called the skyscraper technique, right? So you take the average, you add on top of it, whatever extra you have to add right here. And then you put it up here on your new building. And then now Google and users prefer this thing over here versus this thing over here. This is actually the exact method that I used to rank for uh, beginner fishing tips. I, I went and this was for a local website that really just is a website that sells fishing trips to Alaska uh, locally. Uh, they weren't trying to rank for really any national keywords. And if you click on this, you can see that, you know, there's only like 38 tips in here around fishing for beginners. Uh, pretty simple article, but it gets a lot of traffic. And if we plug it into Ahrefs, you can even see that the reason why this website really took off in terms of its organic traffic is only because of that article. You can see it started here, boom, this is all local type stuff. And then it pretty much shot up up here and it's just getting thousands of visits a month because of that one article. Um, and so again, you know, what we're trying to do here is when we go into phase two and then also phase three is we're working on individual URLs, but we're also figuring out, okay, what do we need to do in order to rank for our main keywords, right? So we wanna look for clusters of keywords. We don't care only about just one keyword. We don't care about, um, you know, keywords just for traffic. So what I mean by this is you have two types of keywords. You have keywords for traffic and you have keywords for purpose. And here's the difference. So keywords for purpose are keywords that you actually want to um, uh, rank for your website because they actually have something really to do with your business. Keywords for traffic are just keywords that you want just to get traffic, but they don't necessarily really have as much to do with what you do. Now, you always want to go for keywords for purpose because keywords for traffic will come after you figure out your purpose. And the way you figure out your purpose, again, is to figure out what do you want to replicate in your niche. So let's say like me, I want to rank for SEO training eventually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go figure out who's ranking for SEO training. I, I put it in. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go for something big like Udemy. I want to go for more of like a niche down website. And here we go, click minded. These guys are doing everything around SEO training. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna plug them into Screaming Frog, which I already did. I'm gonna sync up my Ahrefs API so I can see what these guys are doing in terms of um, you know what how, how valuable their different pages are in terms of the UR ratings. Press start, crawl that, export it, and then I'm gonna plug it into my phase one template. And here you go, I already did this. So you can see here, I filtered by the UR rating and here's all of their most valuable pages, right? This is probably where they're getting most of their traffic. What I'm doing is I'm gonna go and try to replicate a similar theme to these guys. And again, this is a little bit different than keyword research, right? Because I'm not necessarily just going out and doing keyword research for traffic. I'm figuring out what's already working in my niche and then going for people who are doing something similar. So for instance, these guys are, you know, have a really high authority page for an SEO checklist. And I already sort of had this on my own website. If I look at SEO audit checklist, I already know that on my website, I have an SEO audit checklist that's already ranking somewhat well. Now, obviously if these guys are bringing in traffic and they're being able to rank for other keywords like SEO training um, as a general keyword on their homepage and stuff like that, well, I'm gonna try to wanna improve this ranking and try to rank really well for SEO audit checklist because obviously Google's looking at this entire architecture rather than just a page by page basis. So you could see also they have another thing, SEO certification. I have the same thing, right? So, and this is without even really doing competitor research. I just knew that, you know, this is something that I need on my website because it was for a purpose. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the best parts of their website. I'm gonna try to replicate it as my own, meet those averages like we're talking about. Like the reason, one of the reasons why I'm making this tutorial right now is because I'm uh, wanting to break down this video into a con piece of content where I'm gonna be um, transcribing the video uh, you know, taking image, taking screenshots, that sort of thing, and then plugging it into a, a post where I can try to rank just like these guys are for SEO checklist. What am I going to do next? Probably this thing, same thing for SEO certification, so on and so on until I've pretty much figured out, uh, you know, pr until I've pretty much like taken all of like all I can from what they're doing. So like SEO check site analysis, all of these things are like probably, you know, I, maybe I'll pick like five things out of the things that they have. And then I create those URLs and try to rank for that. And then I throw this away and I go for somebody else. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to replicate a theme and then I'm trying to improve it because I'm not just trying to rank for SEO checklist. Ranking for SEO checklist is great, 
But what I want to do is I want to make what their article is and I want to improve it. I want to make the layout better. I want to make it more comprehensive, maybe add more images and really have something that's more valuable to people than something that's um, already ranking well on Google. Uh, in terms of the clustering and the actual keyword research for clients, that's one of the ways that I'd recommend doing it. Another way that I recommend doing it is just going and finding uh, clusters of content that you want to rank for. Like for instance, if you wanted to go for, uh, let's say you want to go for SEO training and you wanted to find all the keywords related to SEO training. One of the great ways to do that is to go to Ahrefs, click on Keyword Explorer, type in SEO training, look at the different keyword ideas, and then start creating a list of keywords that are uh, similar to this uh, thing. So SEO training, SEO certification, learn SEO. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start figuring out what can you start ranking for as an entity around certain subjects to increase your authority um, around a, a general, more general type keyword. Really the best way I like to do it is really just doing layout optimization, copying similar layouts, and then ranking similarly to how other people are, and then improving that and repurposing sort of what they're already doing into my own strategy and taking different ideas from different places uh, like I was showing you before. So for example, if let's say I completely tapped out what ClickMinded was doing and I found another um, related competing domain, so you go to com competing domains here, find the different keywords that are overlapped. So let's say Site Checker Pro, let's say Bootcamp Digital. And we're going to plug that in now to Streaming Frog. Start figuring out all the stuff that these guys are going for. So we'll just press start. And here we go. Look at this. SEO coaching, consulting, uh, results, testimonials. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the most valuable pages. And I don't even really have to uh, do it just by UR. One of the things I could do is I could just export all these links. Um, or even just copy them from here. I think I can just control C. Go to uh, Ahrefs batch analysis, plug them in, press analyze, and then it'll also show me the traffic of these pages as well. So look at this. Uh, oops, sorry, I gotta do the exact URL, I believe. Okay, so now I have the URs of all of them and the traffic. So look at this training. Uh, social media book and again not all of this stuff applies to me but some of it does and so by having these other pages that I'm bringing in I'm really just copying similar layouts and I'm being able to rank as an entity in a niche by by having different things that people are expecting to find so here you can go online marketing and social media training and I could really just repurpose that into my own SEO training type page that follows a similar layout to something like this and although these people don't exactly replicate what I'm going for, a lot of these things you can repurpose into sort of your own strategy. Um, and so you start building out this entire architecture where you take the best things out of each people, uh, out of your different competitors things, you find the lowest hanging fruit um, based on let's say the current um, UR and like the difficulty of the keywords are targeting. And you start ranking for those things by ranking for purpose rather than uh, for just for traffic. So that's really the SEO audit checklist. Um, in three different phases. Uh, I know that was kind of a lot and I tried covering that as fast as I could. Um, if you want a more comprehensive, in-depth look at the uh, SEO audit and how to do implementations and how to really get your hands on real-time um, experience, uh, make sure you head over to my SEO certification page and you can get some more information about um, how I am actually able to train people uh, in a group setting and in a live one-on-one uh, -on -one setting as well, and actually get certified at doing the stuff that I'm talking about. Realistically, if you spend enough time on this, you could probably get going doing this in within like a month or two and really making a pretty good amount of money if you get this process down. That's it for today, guys. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.